Hello and welcome to my today's presentation. As already introduced, I'm Andreas Geier, and I want to talk about pipeline group optimization on disaggregated systems. So although I would assume most of you, if not all, know already about it, let's start by getting on the same page with pipelines. So that we have common ground. Pipelines are the state-of-the-art execution model in modern database management systems. So queries are transformed into pipeline-based query execution plans, and each pipeline consists of multiple pipeline-friendly operators, as well as a pipeline breaking operator at the end. We have a picture of one pipeline-based execution plan here on the right. We see some base tables um, on the ground, and then some, yeah, pipeline friendly operators like for example a selection and pipeline breaking operators like joins at the end what's really important in this model is that the data the input data so for example these tables are partitioned into chunks of data which are, can be processed in parallel so you can utilize a system completely by only one pipeline and therefore pipelines are executed one after the other and they are executed according to this pipeline or to such a pipeline dependency graph, where I can see um, pipeline three, the execution of pipeline three depends on the pipeline execution of pipeline two, and pipeline four depends on pipeline three and pipeline one, as you can see in the big picture as well. So traditionally, um, these pipelines are executed on, for example, scale up hardware. Yeah. I guess uh, the, the advantages are well known. You have direct access to everything like memory, like storage, and you know or can predict the latencies you have to expect. But of course, there is a problem. Oh. With the yeah, <laughs> with the camera. I, I, no, it doesn't like me, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yes, now it likes me. Cool. Um, yeah, of course, uh, there is a problem well known. It's the elastic elasticity. So, of course, we have something like virtualization with virtual machines, but it's very hard to scale so such a system with its workload when it comes to hardware. So, if the hardware on the system isn't enough anymore, you have basically near to none possibility to ch change this within time. So, this is addressed by the emerging technology of disaggregated hardware. We have already heard here and there about it. So our notion is there are several pools, like for example, a compute, memory, and storage pool. And each consists of individual cards, like for example, a CPU card with attached network interface controller, like for example, SmartNIC, maybe an FPGA, or it can be even an attached and another attached CPU. Same for memory and storage. So everything communicates over the network and I can combine, combine my system by software. So if I need more CPU power, I just allocate another one from the compute pool. And if I don't need it anymore, I give it back to the compute pool. As easy as this, yeah. But of course there is a cost to this. So we have, as I said, network communication. And the problem here is of course, we don't really know the latency. So it depends highly on the network. It dep depends highly on the implementation and the distance. So yeah, how can we still execute pipelines on disaggregated uh, hardware? And there have been already existing systems. We heard about one yesterday in the keynote, which is Farview, where the approach is to push down the operator near to the memory. So according to the near memory uh, processing paradigm, um, this is mostly state of the art, I'd say, or um, yeah, trying to bring the state of the art approach to the new hardware. But we argue there are some limitations. So if we say these memory uh, sticks have some smart NIC, if we push multiple operators to the smart NIC, there might be a bottleneck within short time. This can be a problem. Therefore, we follow another approach. We say, okay, we request the data, we ship the data actually from the memory to the CPU or to the compute. And by that, try to 
um, yeah, solve this problem of limited computational power. So of course, we still allow a, a operator pushdown, but in a limited way. And the problem here could be, of course, that if we have multiple queries, multiple pipelines that access the same data, I may transfer them redundantly. And of course, I don't want that. I guess that's it's clear. So our idea is similar to the well-known group commits. We would like to have a group data access. So like a group read. We just say, OK, we come up with our pipeline groups. As the name suggests, um, this means we group pipelines together. And this according to their data need or data requirements. And how do we do this? So we have here on the top our already introduced pipeline dependency graphs, a multi, uh, multiple of them. And we're starting by analyzing them uh, according to their data needs. So which tables are accessed, which columns are accessed, and we group them together into pipeline groups um, so that the pipelines which have the most overlap in their data requirements are in one pipeline group, ideally. And these pipeline groups are then scheduled on the, computer, uh, on the compute pool in a way that they are uh, that each pipeline of a pipeline group is executed together so that we can um, reduce the redundant data transfer over our network significantly. For this approach, we also have a, a system architecture in mind, which looks or which is based on these two components, I'd say. So we have from our compute pool, um, basically a compute node, I'd say, with a lot of computational power and limited memory only. And on the other hand, we have memory nodes from our memory pool, which have a lot of memory, enough to store our base data, enough to store all data we need, and only limited compute power. For example, smart NICs, CPUs, whatever, mainly for communication over the network. And this is where we started by implementing a data transfer manager, so a network communication library. Um, in our case, this is RDMA based on InfiniBand. And now if we have queries, like for example, three queries, they coming in, we batch them together into a query batch. Uh, there might be certain criteria how to do this. At the moment, this is simply time, so we say, Every uh, query in a certain time window is in the same query batch. These are optimized by a standard query optimizer as, as known into pipelines. And these pipelines are then grouped together according to an optimization goal. So this, as I already said, is in our case, the data overlap. So we say um, we want to have as much shared access to the data as possible. But of course, other goals might be possible. And these pipeline groups are then handed over to our pipeline group executor, which consists of three more uh, components. Uh, it's basically, for example, the task to schedule and distribute the work on the different compute nodes, or the data transfer here on the right uh, is capable of, yeah, of managing or of triggering data transfer and of controlling the data transfer from which memory to which compute unit or node, and yes. This system architecture we have um, implemented into a proof of concept. And let's start uh, shortly with our hardware. So of course, we have the problem. We ha don't have actual disaggregated hardware. We would love to, but it's not there. So we have to simulate it with the help of RDMA and two monolithic servers, which are connected via InfiniBand with a maximum speed of up to 12 and a half gigabytes per second. This gets important uh, on the next, next slide. And we have two servers mainly with, or I say roughly with the same hardware or no big difference. So we started by uh, evaluating our RDMA implementation to know whether it is capable of transferring data fast enough. And therefore we have two different benchmark types. So we have on the one side the throughput benchmark and the, its task is to send data from memory nodes to compute nodes without actually doing anything on the compute node with it. So it's a 
yeah, it's the best performance. It's the best performance our RDMA implementation can reach by sending data. So it's more like a theoretical value um, because it's not real, uh, really realistic, of course, this workload. And on the other hand, the more realistic workload is our consume benchmark, where we do basically the same thing. So we ship the data from the memory node to the compute node, but this time we have an operator on the compute node actually doing something with the data and blocking the RDMA buffers until the data is used. And this makes it much more realistic. And still our performance is close to the one of the throughput tests. So our, uh, even in the consume benchmark, we are close to the 12 and a half gigabyte per second, which is our theoretical hardware limitation in this blue line. And uh, because of that, we say uh, this implementation is capable of providing us the network implementation we need for our pipeline group evaluation. And for, this, uh, for these experiments on our pipeline group approach, we have still the same hardware configuration, but now um, query template with a sim uh, which translates into a simple pipeline like this. So we have um, some data table with at least three columns, a selection smaller than N and some ag aggregation at the end. So not very heavy lifting, but all already with three columns involved and all these three columns have to be transferred. They consist of, uh, or they 1.5 gigabytes of size and consist of integer values between zero and 100. This is um, kind of important because by uh, choosing this N, we can control the selectivity of the query and therefore simulate different workloads uh, in computation. So four of these pipelines, of these concrete pipelines with uh, a chosen N are then grouped together into a pipeline group. And additionally, we can vary the overlap of the required columns. So each uh, pipeline requires three columns, but it doesn't have to be the same columns. So we can choose, do they share data? How much data do they share? And maybe do they share all of the data? And then we did our pipeline group execution benchmarks. At first, um, as I already said at the beginning, pipelines are processed in chunks. And we tried to figure out what is the best size of such chunks so that we can interleave computation with transfer as best as possible. And therefore we tested uh, combinations of chunk sizes and RDMA buffer sizes and came to the conclusion that around four megabyte of chunk size and uh, 500 kilobyte of RDMA buffer size work best for us. And with that configuration, we then executed a pipeline group with four pipelines, each pipeline fully parallel to, to the others. So each pipeline has its own thread. And then we change the overlap in the data. So on the left side, we see zero of three means there is no overlap. So complete, uh, complete distinct data or the system isn't aware of any overlap. Um, one of, of three means then um, that we, share one column uh, over all pipelines. And this reduces already the uh, amount of transferred columns from 12 on the left side to nine for this point to six here when we share two columns over all pipelines. And on the right, we only have to transfer three columns because all columns are shared across the pipelines, across all four pipelines. And what's remarkable is that we already achieve a performance very close to the one here in orange, uh, which I named NUMA, uh, that is that the data is one NUMA hub from the computation. So we're already close to being only a NUMA hub uh, in the system if we share the data. So this is great for latency hiding. And of course, this is only a proof of concept. There is still a lot of work to do. And in the future, we have, also, uh, I have four points that I want to mention now. Of course, there are more, but first point, there are of course different strategies for batching the queries. I already said, 
there are different uh, possibilities for grouping the pipelines together. It doesn't have to be the, uh, the data overlap. It can be something completely different. Don't know, we will see. Um, as we have two monolithic servers, we didn't pay too much attention yet to data placement, to work placement. This is something we have to do, of course, which is pretty interesting, I'd say. And last but not least, um, there are technologies like CXL. I already said we have RDMAO and Filmiband. We want to in integrate CXL as well and other emerging technologies. So this was my talk. Thank you for your presentation. And I'm now would be happy to answer your questions. <laughs>